my name is Emma and welcome welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different since it's going to be on Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, specifically the vascular type. Sclerosis can actually be caused by Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome as well as many other diseases, which is why I feel it's so interesting and why I wanted to research on it. We'll talk more about how it affects the spine later on in this video. But first, what is Vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or for short, VEDS? Vascular EDS is a subtype of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a connective tissue condition. VEDS is also known as type 4 of Ehlers-Danlos. Since it is such a broad disease, most of what I'll touch upon in this video, except complications affecting the vascular system, applies for Ehlers-Danlos as a whole and not just type 4. So VEDS is a group of inherited syndromes that affects the skin, joints, and blood vessels. So the skin is very stretchy, the blood vessels fragile, and the joints flexible. We're first going to take a microscopic look into this disease and then zoom out and see how it affects the patient. Everything that I say in this video is proved by scientists and my citations will be down in the description below. So it all starts in the genetic code. Vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is caused by mutations present at birth in the COL3A1 gene and rarely the COL1A1 gene, which are just fancy names for certain areas in the DNA. These genes code for type 3 collagen protein. But first, how is a protein formed? Genes contain the instructions for making the proteins. First, your DNA is transcribed into messenger RNA, or for short, mRNA, thanks to an enzyme called the RNA polymerase. The mRNA then moves from the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell. Following a highly conserved code, the ribosome reads the mRNA to make a protein structure composed of amino acids. Based on the code, the ribosome adds a new amino acid on the growing protein. Each amino acid is coded by a sequence of three nucleotides, called a codon. Thus, if there's a mutation in the DNA, the codons containing these mutations will code for the wrong amino acids, which can defect the protein. To simplify, the DNA provides instructions for making the building blocks of proteins. These proteins help with the structure and function of our body. However, in some cases, the DNA provides wrong instructions, which in turn makes the wrong amino acids. As a reminder, amino acids are like Lego blocks that form proteins. So to recap, in vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, during the transcription of the mutated COL3A1 gene, the RNA polymerase synthesizes the messenger RNA, which now has the mutation. The ribosome reads the mutation and creates the wrong amino acids for the type 3 collagen. So what are the consequences of the mutations in the making of the collagen protein? First, let's talk about the amino acid structure. An amino acid is composed of an amino group, a carboxyl group, and a side chain. These names are all just different parts of an amino acid. But for now, let's just focus on side chains. Side chains vary, they define each amino acid. The various side chain interactions influence how the protein structures itself. For example, some side chains are hydrophilic, so they like water, while some are hydrophobic, so they don't like water. The amino acids with hydrophilic side chains will be on the exterior side of the protein interacting with water, while the amino acids with hydrophobic side chains will sit in the interior of the protein away from water. In type 3 collagen, like most collagen proteins, three polypeptide chains, which are linear sequences of amino acids, loop around each other forming a triple helix. This makes a procollagen. The loose ends of the procollagen are then cut off to make a perfect spring. The collagen molecule is thus formed and they assemble together to make a collagen fibril. These fibrils in turn assemble together to make a collagen fiber. Collagen fibril is very organized, with even spaces between each procollagen. However, this is not the case for Ehlers-Danlos. See, in this syndrome, collagen protein doesn't structure itself correctly because in the first structure, the polypeptide doesn't have all the correct amino acids. In the end, the three polypeptide chains loosely wrap around each other, leaving uneven spaces between the polypeptides. The mutation then interferes with the proper cleaving of the N-terminus propeptides, which is the start of the amino acid chain, the amino group, and the C-terminus propeptide, which is the end of the chain, the carboxyl group. These fancy names simply mean the two opposite ends of the procollagen. So to simplify, because of the mutation, the ends of the procollagen are not cut off properly, leaving the fibril structure with uneven spaces between each defective procollagen. So what is the function of a normal collagen fibril in a human body? Collagen is the main component of connective tissue. It's one of the most abundant proteins in the body, 
And remember, a protein is simply one of the main building blocks used to make our body run and function. Type 3 collagen is found in almost any organ, such as the bowels, skin, ligaments, valves, and blood vessels. Collagen fibers are located in the dermis of the skin. It supports the skin, giving it the firmness and elasticity it needs to move and function healthily. What are the consequences of defective collagen in the skin? Why does EDS cause transits in skin and make it bruise so easily? As we already saw, mutations cause the fibril structure to not have a very uniform structure and cause uneven spaces between each collagen protein. As we can see in this microscopic view of a fibril structure, which are the circles, in people that don't have EDS, the fibril structure is very organized and has very even spaces. However, this is not the case in EDS patients as the spaces are uneven and much larger. These large empty spaces with no collagen explains why the skin can be so translucent and fragile in some areas. Without the collagen in some parts of the skin, you can see the veins because it's so translucent. Next, what is the consequence of defective collagen in blood vessels? Well, blood is carried throughout the body through different blood vessels. Arteries are blood vessels that carry oxygen-rich blood and veins carry blood low oxygen. They are composed of many layers in which the thick outer layer, the tunica adventitia, is mostly composed of collagen. The collagen prevents the blood vessels from expanding too much due to internal blood pressure and secures the blood vessel to nearby organs, stabilizing it. Even if both have the same three layers, arterial walls are much thicker than vein walls as they contain higher blood pressure. We'll focus only on arteries for this video, as vascular EDS affects more the arteries than the veins. In VEDS, arterial walls are much weaker due to the loss of quantity and quality of the collagen fibers. The fragile blood vessels can then cause many complications. One complication is an arterial aneurysm. Let's use a hose for example, where water puts pressure on the walls of the hose. See, if there's a weak spot in the hose, that spot would expand, creating a balloon. So it's very similar to an arterial aneurysm, where a spot in the weak arterial wall expands, creating a bulge. Most of the time, arterial aneurysms do not show symptoms and aren't dangerous. However, in some severe cases, the aneurysm can rupture, leading to life-threatening internal bleeding. Another complication is an arterial dissection, which is a tear in the inner wall of a weak artery. Let's use that same example of the hose. Say there's a tear in the inner wall of the hose. The water that's flowing through the hose is going to start entering that tear, separating the inner wall from the outer wall. In an arterial dissection, the blood flowing through the artery enters the aortic wall through the tear. This separates the layer of the arterial wall which weakens the aorta. Arterial dissections can be deadly if they rupture and can also cause strokes and heart attacks if left untreated. So next, what are the consequences of defective collagen in heart valves? Well, heart valves are one-way valves that keep the blood flowing in one direction. They have flaps that open and close once during each heartbeat, so that the blood does not come back in the wrong direction. Collagen is the major extracellular matrix component of heart valves. It provides strength to the valve. In EDS cases, the defective collagen can cause the valves to be loose and weak. This can cause valvular regurgitation, where blood flow goes backwards instead of the normal one direction, forwards. The blood is thus not pumped well enough throughout the whole body to supply oxygen. This causes fatigue and shortness of breath, as the body is running out of oxygen. Over time, this can lead to the heart enlarging, causing heart failure. Last but not least, how does Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome cause scoliosis? Let's start by looking at the spine structure. The spine consists of vertebrae connected to each other by fibrous connective tissue called ligaments. Ligaments are composed of collagen fibrils. These tissues structure and support the spine. The spine is our backbone, no pun intended. It withstands the forces of gravity and the weight of our body. Essentially, the spine is exposed to a lot of force and changes in forces as we live about our day. Let's take a bridge for example. Suspension cables provide the bridge with support, that way it's still and sturdy when exposed to various forces, letting the cars drive by safely. However, say the cables, the bridge's support system, become loose and weak. The bridge doesn't have enough support, meaning it becomes unsteady and wobbly as we can see in this video. Ligaments work similarly as suspension cables. It provides structure to the spine, making it straight and sturdy. The defective collagen in EDS individuals causes the weakening of the ligaments, like the weakening of the suspension cables. The spine is thus not supported well enough to withstand everyday forces. 
This can cause deformities such as scoliosis, which is a sideways curvature of the spine, aka the spine is just not straight. To sum it all up, vascular ehlers danlos syndrome is an inherited disease that causes many complications. I hope my video explained how such a small change in the DNA can affect the entire human body, including the spine, reflecting on how amazing human biology and proteins are. Thanks for watching.